Hey, what's up you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you my review of this week's episode of Arrow on the CW, which is episode 5 of season 6 called Deathstroke Returns. Um, also enjoy my uh, new Batman the Animated Series <laughs> um, artwork post right there. I think it looks pretty awesome. Um, I posted a more close-up picture of it on my Facebook if you want to check that out. link to my Facebook is in the description. But that's not what this video is about. Um, you know, I... Uh, I've been reviewing Arrow here and there this season. I think I reviewed the first two episodes. Uh, two or three episodes, I forget. Um, I didn't review last week's episode, Reversal. Um, for two reasons. One reason being that there's a lot of shows I'm juggling right now, so I kind of have to pick and choose. Or, you know, I work too, so I can't always uh, fit it in all the time, so I kind of have to prioritize. And reason two, it didn't help that last week's episode was... And just not very good to me. Um, it was very Felicity centric, and I just did not care for it. So I didn't really feel a need to uh, get a video up, <laughs> um, you know, over other things I was trying to, you know, watch or something like that. So, uh, but this week's episode, Deathstroke Returns, I liked quite a bit actually. It definitely, uh, or redeemed it for the most part from the previous week, um, mainly because of course Deathstroke Returns, and we see uh, Manu Bennett's Slade Wilson again. Um, who come on? You know, this whole Slade storyline this season is just screaming spin off. Spin off, come on. <laughs> they could have already started the spin off when he left to go look for his son. That could have just been the easy launching pad right there. And if they're more nervous about it, they could have had Oliver in the first few episodes or something, you know? Because um, Deathstroke's been a fan favorite character on the show for a long time. And I think with all the spin offs and, uh, you know, different, uh, you know, shows about, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say obscure characters, but there's a lot, of, let's just say there's a lot of superhero shows nowadays, so I think Deathstroke, with his popularity in the Arrowverse, uh, would definitely warrant his own show, uh, very much like uh, The Punisher on Netflix. Um, but I am still nonetheless liking Deathstroke's uh, arc on Arrow this season, you know, Manu Bennett's just a great presence whenever he's on the screen, and uh, I've just really loved how they've, they've uh, developed him from the end of season 5 into this season. It's been a really good choice, I think, instead of just making him a straight-up villain, he's more of a back-to-his-anti-hero kind of status now. Um, he feels like, like a real character um, now that Mirakuru has worn off. Um, he, you know, he has a lot of regrets about what he did to Oliver, of course, and... I just think that's been really well portrayed. Um, and of course, he goes looking for his son. He asks for Oliver's help, and as the Green Arrow, as the diplomat, Oliver Queen, um, you know, they're told that his son was killed, and you know, him and Oliver share a pretty good scene over that. But of course, we knew it wouldn't really be quite like that. Um, but we'll talk more about that in a second because it got pretty damn good, actually. Um, we also had Dinah this week, who I actually do like quite a bit. You know, I. Part of me wishes she would be the, you know, end game love interest for Oliver instead of uh, Felicity, but we know how that's going. Um, we finally see the identity of the vigilante revealed, you know, Mr. Uh, you know, Visor Vigilante. Um, and it turns out to be Dinah's former lover and partner, um, who I think played Leon Kennedy in one of the Resident Evil movies, you know, which wasn't very good, but. <laughs> Um, and some of you are disappointed by this reveal. I, I don't think it was uh, a huge issue. I guess. I mean, you know, Vigilante's been around for a little while now, so maybe they should have made it bigger somehow. I guess. I guess I can understand it, but you know, he, he was never as important as like the whole Prometheus thing was last season. And you know, I think it made sense so that since both him and Diana turned up, you know, around the, in the show around the same time, I think it fits together, you know, well enough for what it is. Um, and I do like Dinah, I do think the actress does a good job playing her. Um, you know, whether or not she's Oliver's love interest in the end. Um, you know, so I don't mind her getting a more personal story for this, potentially, so I, I think it could turn out alright. Um, and like I said, I love the Slade stuff this episode. Him waging is, uh, sort of assault at the end, it was, uh, I thought it was a great climax. Um, I like how the sequence is filmed. It was probably the closest, uh, <laughs> any of the CW, sh um, comic book shows have gotten to the likes of some of the Daredevil and, you know, Netflix choreography. Um, I thought it was a really, really cool sequence. Um, you know, just uh, him using swords left and right, then shooting guys on the side, too, or... It was really cool. And he definitely fights a lot differently than, uh, you know, Oliver the others would. Oliver can fight like that, but, you know, of course, he holds back in different ways. Um, 
you know, also not not sure how much longer this whole uh, Diggle as uh, Green Arrow thing's gonna last. Um, but you know, again, we'll see. Uh, and the reveal of uh, the, you know uh, Slade's son, you know, being the leader. Um, yeah, I think it's fine. You know, is a a little bit predictable, I guess. Um, but I think it uh, you know keeps Slade in sort of the anti-hero dynamic instead of like having him uh, turn off or something. Um, because when him and Oliver were talking at one point, they were playing music that almost made me feel like we were supposed to be still a little bit uncertain about Slade. Um, and that annoys me because you see the rest of Team Arrow saying, oh yeah, I don't like Slade, or I don't trust him, but you know, it's like they have like blinders to you know what Oliver has to say about him and everything. But um, See, so I think the reveal of uh, you know, Slade's son being the leader was fine. Um, he definitely creates a parallel but also a contrast between you know of course Oliver's relationship with William and everything so I think it works out good um, and you know it gives uh, you know, Oliver even more of a reason to try and uh, help Slade as much as he can you know despite everything um, so yeah I honestly thought this was a really good episode um, not great but very good definitely a uh, step in the right direction um, definitely a lot better than a uh, reversal last week um, I'm rating this episode about an 8.9 out of 10. You know, I thought it was that good. Again, you know, mainly thanks to Manu Bennett, but, you know, so it worked. Um, so, yeah, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, like, subscribe. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.